Um, this is your opportunity to ask the Red Hat folks who are here in the room um, questions about anything you heard today. So um, I need a first uh, person to um, come up and ask something. I'm going to hand off to Julio, and I will run around and bribe you if I have to. Um, otherwise, take it away, Julio. All right. Thank you, Diane. First of all, I do want to thank Diane and all the people that have helped organize today's comments. I think it was a pretty fruitful event. So thank you. All right, folks, so this is the uh, one of my favorite segments. This is the Ask Me Anything. So I right. would like to open it up to the audience to see if there's any questions whatsoever, question. product, strategy, <laughs> technical questions, whatever you like. We got so I'm part of the Knative um, community, and I know that you guys released a preview of that. I just want to understand how important do you see serverless in your platform, and can you share? Uh, future plans, or even wood map? Yeah. Sure. So the question was around Knative and serverless and what our plans are. Um, Tushar, do you want to handle that? Yeah. One? So um, as you said, uh, uh, Knative uh, is, a, is, for those of you who don't know, is part of uh, the community uh, efforts to do serverless. And um, Red Hat and Google and others uh, uh, have been kind of uh, some of the foundational members of that. Um, uh, Knative and serverless is uh, the core part of the OpenShift platform. Uh, and we have released this as tech preview in 4.2, which is the most recent release. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so part of that is, re is really, um, you know, so, so we are very excited about that. I mean, we are, um, we are working with, uh, I know there are plans also to, there is, there is talk in the community about what to do about the foundation itself and, uh, uh, you know, should it belong to CNCF. So those discussions are ongoing. Uh, but, um, you know, just in, to answer um, in short, I mean, that's really the foundational platform for our serverless technology and it's, um, we're going to be, we're fully behind it and uh, we are, as I said, tech preview, and we're looking forward to GA it in the upcoming releases, uh, 4.3, 4.4. Uh, you know, so there are various, as you know, I mean, there are various parts. Go ahead, Dion. We got another. Yeah, I'll just add to that. Um, from a, a model serving perspective, uh, we've been, uh, we seldom have been uh, part of a joint effort, which was, uh, uh, was a project called KF Serving, uh, also includes uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, Bloomberg, IBM. Uh, Red Hat may be involved to some, some degree, but uh, basically it's a um, serverless model serving uh, platform uh, which is built on Knative. We're really excited about it from a kind of auto scaling, more efficient scaling and scale to zero. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's currently in a sort of uh, you know, 0.1 early release and uh, it's uh, an independent project which, well, it's, it's part of the Kubeflow project, but it's um, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't have dependency on Kubeflow, so you can use it within other you know, uh, ML pipelines outside of, of Kubeflow. And it's uh, framework agnostic um, and supports kind of pre and post uh, model um, kind of compute jobs. So it's kind of almost like an inference graph. Great, thank you so much. All right, any other questions here? I'm going to ask a leading question because ah. um, I get to do this. Because um, from Sherrard to maybe. Uh, to Shara's point of view, what's missing in terms of operators for, op what's, what's on your wish list? Things that haven't been built yet, um, operators that aren't available yet that you really want to make sure get into Operator Hub and available for Data Hub? <laughs> I, given my background in data and security and customers threatening to sue, um, I would like to see more with Operator Hub in terms of how do we secure our data. We talk a lot about AI. Everyone understands without data, you don't have AI. So more of a focus on you know, uh, partners that will help us figure out that whole security aspect of it and just make it as easy as it is to deploy a Kafka or a Selden or a Prometheus. You know, let's make it also easy to secure your data and just you know, really make that more streamlined. Hey, so, I'll oh, go ahead. No, I, I'll just add to that. Right? I mean, if you think, another angle to it, if you think about the operator maturity model, right, like we have, 
I mean, the various levels that is kind of simple install and configure to, uh, you know, what we call full life cycle. Uh, then there is this beyond that, and the question is, we talked about AI ops and intelligent operator, and so that's some of the, uh, the you know, the cutting edge that, uh, you know, which is kind of missing, but I think uh, we, I'm sure people, I, I know of people working on it, so that's another area of uh, where I think, uh, which is, I think, missing right now, but could be filled with. Um, Great, thank you. So actually, so following up on that question about uh, operators, um, one of the things I heard a lot about today was the complexity that um, a lot of these solutions require uh, this idea of like a meta operator, an operator that deploys out other components that are operators, essentially. Um, but today, as far as I understand it, there's no real operator to operator awareness. Is that something you think that will become part of maybe an intelligence layer? within the OpenShift platform or within the Kubernetes layer to have that operator-to-operator -operator communication? So, so um, oh, you, Aaron, you have All right. I, I've actually done that before. Um, so within OpenShift and the operator lifecycle management, you can actually create subscriptions. And I know that's a really confusing word and completely overloaded, especially by Red Hat. But the idea is that <laughs> bad. Anyways, so you can create um, basically a subscription on these servers that creates those dependencies to then install what you need. So in terms of storage, you know, I've done that where I say I push a subscription to a new cluster, I want to have my database, I want to have it backed by Ceph block storage, and I want it to install all of those operators for me and let me know when that's done. So it actually does provide some operational process through um, the OLM to be able to make that happen. So is that what you're referring to? or? You... Um, so yes, uh, okay. but there's also this con the context of discovery. Because for instance, I need these operators to exist, so I'm going to deploy them. But what if they're, those subscriptions already exist? How do I share keys or have some sort of operational knowledge between vendors, right? Because I mean, I'm, an I we're, I'm from an ISV. We're a monitoring solution. There's lots of database ISVs that have the best practices about their database, mm -hmm. but it'd be great if, as a monitoring provider, I can interact directly with my partnership with that database uh, company who has deployments. So, Just the operational awareness yeah. between operators, I think, is the thing that's missing. Yeah, so I, my impression is that we're like just getting to that problem, yep. right? Like, so if you look at you know, Open Data Hub is a meta operator. Um, we have another one, um, I, I know it as Integrately. CVO, yeah, OLM. Yep. Like they're, whole, they, they, they're a bunch of them. Um, and we are exactly at that point now like where, where we just had the problem, oh, we want to install two of them, right? And they, of course, all install the same components, right? Because you know, Kafka is in everything. And um, I, I think it's it's a good time right now to to actually bring that up on the community side and and define the best practices. So we should follow up and and you know see like how we loop you into that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'll give an easy one. This one is more. I mean, so if also if an operator is dependent on another operator, so far with with four or two. It knows the dependency that there is a dependency now, and it and it deploys that operator which was not there previously. So that's just a another way of an operator kind of being cognizant of another operator being there. Uh, previously, you'd have to actually do it yourself. I mean, yeah. manually do. For, for but, but like you know, but if you, I think like at the one we, the vision we want is that you can have um, and then you know with the, with the data we are, we are trying to get there specifically as having a reference architecture that can broker the relationships between multiple vendors, right? Our, our vision for the data is not that Red Hat becomes a vendor for an AI platform, right? What we want is that OpenShift is a platform that customers can deploy flexible AI platforms and in that get an experience that's integrated Right across the whole ecosystem, right, and like you know, if, 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 so box. But um, you know, at the end, like right now, you you have the hyperscalers with their um, integration capabilities and centralization, right, which is it's just a very heavy model, and there's not much room for the rest of the software industry, right. But they set the standard of what customers expect from an experience and integration point of view, right, and and with with operators. 
And Kubernetes, we have the capability to counter that with a distributed integration model. But for that, we need to figure out how to negotiate the integrations at scale when customers basically on the fly deploy combined solutions, right? And that, so that's why this is an extremely important topic that like, we really need to think up on. Thank you. Great. So come Another up to, question. Come up to the mic. Over here. <clears throat> yeah, so my question is about uh, uh, we are doing AI. So AI on online or offline data we are doing, I mean, how, how real time is it, like in, in OpenShift per se? And also, data we are collecting from, let's say, how AI can be used on data collector from IoT? So, uh, various devices, and we are collating and putting data in OpenShift and then doing AI ML on top of that. Mm. Uh, Got it. Is that a, who wants to take that one? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so, so what was the first one before the IoT? Yeah. So IoT, so on the, on the IoT, that's, that's a really big challenge, really, ultimately. And uh, uh, one, one of the solutions to this will be to compute uh, at the edge and you know, use uh, the kind of federated learning techniques uh, that uh, uh, we discussed earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, what was the first question again? Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, most most uh, data, most models are batch and they're trained uh, and then sort of uh, released and then and then retrained and, and used. So the frequency, um, you know, sort of depends on 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 how important that sort of most recent uh, bit of data is. So uh, there are some online algorithms, but the majority you'll see there at see out in the wild are are batch based. So um, I want to add a little bit to this as well. So when it comes to the IoT side, um, my argument on the I IoT space and on the edge and, and the edge space is that the infrastructure, like infrastructure, is very important. That's why everyone is here. The infrastructure, when it comes to the edge, is a whole new level because we're now talking about infrastructure that is owned on an edge data center or an edge device. How do you connect to it? How do you make sure that what you're connecting to is who it says what it is? How do you set up the policy behind it? And that's before you even start going after the technical si sides of it. And before we even get to proper IoT, where you can literally have devices move and be anywhere. There's also issues with the radios that we have today. Like if you look at a standard 4G deployment, the density that you're going to have per square mile, I think, is around 4,000 devices, which is why when you go to a conference or, or to a concert, your phone stops working. Uh, when you bring that to the 5G space, then the 5G space is, I think it's three or four million devices per square mile that we're able to have from a density, uh, from a density perspective. So uh, for me, the, the exciting part is not the per, not the, the speed, like how fast can I download something, but it's like how many devices can I get in in a very small amount of area. But these are like some huge technical challenges that we have to solve, and almost all of them are uh, to start off with are going to be on the uh, on the edge. Uh, eventually, we're going to have uh, all of the ethical issues and and various other things that we spoke about that are going to pile on as well uh, as we start to develop these. And so, like we have a whole lot of work that needs to be done there, and a lot of this stuff hasn't been defined yet. So there's there's a huge gap there. Uh, of course, you know, people are doing data collection at the edge today, right? Um, but uh, yeah, you'll see progressively there's there's open source work happening to figure out how to have filtering, how to push um, decisions out to the edge. Like ultimately. Yeah, and like we looking at like just OpenShift metrics itself, right? We we collect a lot of metrics in OpenShift four. You know, if you don't opt out, um, and and I recommend you don't because it's actually really beneficial for you because we can tell you whether your cluster is broken or not, right? And we can predict certain things based on what we see. Like you know, at the end, like if you look at what Red Hat's business is, it's it's generating knowledge about open source software. That's a core why customers pay us because we know things or we can figure them out and then we can fix them, right? And often it is because we have many other customers and we probably have seen the issues that you're running into before or, you know, we can, we can so it's like a herd immunity thing, right? If you send us your data, your, your operational metrics, we can probably identify patterns based on what we have seen somewhere else, right? The problem is that doesn't scale 
we can't collect all the data. So we'll get to the point that we actually have to push decisions out to individual nodes. Right? When, when this goes deeper, right? you can think about like simple like optimizations in the like just small data optimizations um, in the kernel or in the tool chain in Linux, right? Where you you replace static heuristics with machine learning. That to totally makes sense, right? Um, you can't like wait like you can't wait for the cloud to take a decision. Right? That's not only when I'm in a self-driving car. I don't want to wait for the cloud to tell me whether <laughs> whether to stop. Right? Uh, I don't want that in my IT. And uh, we can't. We don't have the bandwidth to send all the data. And even if we could send it from the bandwidth, we don't want to store it all. Right. So uh, you need to figure out how to take push decisions out and basically identify the interesting data that you want to learn from. Right, and then figure out how you either federate the learning or you send enough data up to be useful, but not too much, you know, not more than you can handle. So that's a, I think it's a general problem that everyone has and that being, there are solutions today and I think you're going to see a lot of innovation in that space in open source over the next couple of years. Right? Yeah, because yeah I, I agree. Uh, but uh, having said that, I mean, there are people who are using, I mean, you know, there are each edge use cases that people are using today uh, already. So I don't want us to leave with an impression that this is all, I mean, for example, um, I know of uh, use cases wherein, for example, at an airport, uh, you want to, you are getting a camera feed from, the gates and uh, you know and 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 there are companies who are out there ISVs that can analyze that camera feed uh, can use a model which has been trained somewhere else maybe on Azure or maybe on AWS and then that model is deployed locally at the airport uh, so that it can do real time uh, analytics of that image right so we we actually know of people who are using OpenShift to try to solve that problem uh, so. Uh, so it depends on how you look at edge. Uh, so some of that already is happening. Yeah, that's where I had like online, offline data, and then with IoT, how do I ML and AI can be done? Yeah, yeah. So and and like I said, I mean, there's another example of a of a uh, I don't know if you want to say, but there is another example of um, somebody in the railway stations, right? Same thing, you know. How do you uh, use uh, uh, AI to um, uh, do uh, same same use case? Yeah, one thing I wanted to add was, um, yeah, that's a very good question, right? And as a customer, you'd like to see reference architectures and the solutions that, okay, what does the solution look like? So I think as a vendor community and a partner community, we um, yeah, need to go in the direction to kind of provide you pre prescriptive guidance in the architectures, right? That, hey, this is how you I, I do this kind of a solution, from, um, like from the cloud to the data center to the edge and the use cases and so on. So that way it becomes like easy for you to operationalize for your use case in your environment. Great. So, um, so say I'm a customer um, and I have a specific use case. How do I plug into the whole open data structure so that I can get my use case looked at? Who would like to maybe Sherard? Yeah, um, we're actually trying to make that process uh, simpler. I think the, the best thing is we work a lot with uh, the field and really just getting in touch with the field, getting in touch with Tashar. He drives a lot of the use cases that we see from an AI ML perspective, and, and you know, he's probably a better person to take this question. But uh, we, take, we spend a lot of time understanding the use cases from customers and really driving home what are they trying to do, what's the value that they're trying to bring to their customers and why it's relevant. Uh, but then also we, we apply those internally. You heard a lot about the Open Data Hub and how we use that internally at Red Hat. We have our own set of challenges and our own set of use cases that we bring to the table. And we bring it into an open environment. You, anyone can join the community. Uh, we'll be starting to have community meetings where people can, can just chime in and share their use cases with the, the, the people who are actually contributing to Open Data Hub and just make it more of a conversational piece. Okay, what are you trying to solve? Uh, is there a reference architecture we can provide? Is there more information about tooling that can be added to help out with the use cases and really just kind of drive it from the top down, you know, make sure we're focusing on the use cases and that drives what the community feels like it needs. And, uh, the, no, I, I, and, open, and not the, only are we doing the, Open Data the, Hub. The, the Open Shift Commons SIC yeah. is yes. we have a special interest group for right. ML that is a great 
place to engage and you know so Sharad's team is participating in that directly yes. and so you can have a conversation there about use cases so no, I mean so I was talking to our friends from Microsoft at like our coffee break or something and they are also kind of doing these kind of reference architecture so we were talking about you know some, some they participating in that SIG or open data hub or whatever I mean they have some plans to but I, I think uh, to to I think the question uh, uh, Julio's question. Uh, I think there is more and more interest, and obviously these commons gatherings. One of the things that Diane wants is more and more customers to come and talk about their use cases, um, because that is gives real validation. Those are real world problems. Uh, that's where we, we, you know, we get these reference architectures. So, cool. so great. Can I add something real quick as well? Oh. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, when it comes to these SIGs, I mean, th these things in the Kubernetes space, so I spent a lot of time working with the CNCF and Linux Foundation uh, networking and similar. Uh, a significant portion of the important decisions occur on the SIG calls on the SIG uh, mailing list. So when they're saying join a SIG, these are some of the most effective ways to to get involved in order to make a change. So please, like, when uh, whenever if there's something that's important to you and you see that there's a SIG in, that's attached to it, whether it's whether it's a, a Red Hat uh, organized one or a community one through CNCF or the Kubernetes SIG, please get involved. Please say what your use cases are, where you where the gaps are, because they're not going to know what you, the, what the gaps are unless you tell them. So like, uh, and even better if you have the resources to to join in and actually send some contributions on, they're always hugely uh, appreciated. There's a, there even there's a long tail of, of things that need to get fixed, and uh, the more people who fix those that long tail, the uh, the more that the core engineers can uh, can get done and fix your and fix your uh, critical problems. Great, thanks. So um, another question that I get very often is around working with partners. If if I'm an ISV partner and I want to be part of the Open Data Hub, what's the best way to to connect and engage? Would be a good yeah, uh, that's another good question. Uh, we actually have, um, I, I guess, you know, Ryan King. He, I don't know if he's still in, in the audience, but he helps out a lot with the the partner environment and, and just uh, you know figuring out uh, how do we have a relationship and and how do we you know kind of grow together. Um, but I think reaching, I guess, what's the best channel, Daniel? I, I think or, Open Data Hub and the SIG might be the. Yeah, the SIG. It, it's it's another way where join the SIG, join OpenShift yeah, Commons. I'll, I'll answer. And then the people who are responsible for working with the ISVs and the partner space are all on those 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 SIGs. So that's 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 really kind of pulling all of it to, together. I don't know, Diane, if you want. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just about to give them all those road tips. So, so go for it. <laughs> right. So so we'll we'll hear more about. That, but you know the what we do, you know maybe what we do with partners, right, it's um, we do active enablement, right? We can actually actively help, um, and th that also because it, like for us the space is is very customer driven, right? So if you're an end user and you are trying to do something and you have specific tools or uh, ISVs you want to use, you can also talk to Red Hat through your existing Red Hat uh, channels, through the, through the SIG, through the OpenShift Commons SIG, and um, you help us prioritize which problems we solve and which partners, for example, we pull in. Right? That's like why we have partners up here on stage, because we had customers who had problems, so we reached out and worked together to solve customer problems. And that's really what this is all about. The process is obviously very efficient. Uh, as CEO of a you know a, a sort of scale up company in, based in London, uh, I had very little involvement as CEO. But um, uh, what I did see is that members of the there was a small number of, of uh, team members. Uh, I think it was one engineer and one of our business development people uh, coordinated it, and and there was a very efficient um, certification process. I don't know if you mentioned that, but you know that was step one, and then there was the um, uh, Open Data Hub opportunity which emerged from that. So maybe that is a, an interesting route to try getting on board with certification. Cool. Yeah, one thing I want to add is, hey, uh, yeah, if you're into IT, right, so be friends with the data scientists and the data engineers uh, in your organization because they are looking at all kinds of tools, right? And at the, yeah, at the end of the day, you may be called on to support all those tools on your infrastructure. So from that perspective, if you're able to get ahead of the curve uh, and find out all the tools that, that are the favorites um, of your uh, customers, like as in the, the, the yeah, data scientists, data engineers, so 
So that way, we can prioritize those as well in terms of the operator's integrations, right? Through the Red Hat account team or the SIG um, and the special working groups. Right, Diane, did you wanna I'm, I'm gonna, I've got a couple of slides that I'm gonna throw up there so you can figure out exactly where to go. But right, I wanted great. to thank everybody for- uh, All right, well, thanks everybody. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, Julio. That was good. All right, Celadon and uh, Doc AI.